so we'll discuss fiscal policy fiscal policy is made by government of india and generally ministry of finance so whatever the policy there are two types of policy very important for our examination purpose number one monetary policy and number two fiscal policy so your fiscal policy relates with three important things we will draw a flow chart Uh, just wait a minute make it in a horizontal page make it in a landscape okay so write the heading like fiscal policy and just take the landscape mode of your copy and draw this so you write on the next page you write definition if you have completed this take a landscape form such a take it a landscape form and draw this flow chart So on the next page leave this page we'll keep on adding some points whenever we'll discuss this particular things on the next page you write fiscal policy fiscal policy is the policy fiscal policy is the policy related to related to government revenue government revenue comma government expenditure comma government expenditure and government borrowing first off in other words in other words fiscal policy in other words fiscal policy deals with the deals with the allocation of allocation of tax and non tax receipts tax and non tax receipts in a in a in a productive expenditure in a productive expenditure as well as unproductive expenditure as well as unproductive expenditure as well as unproductive expenditure and managing and managing the debt and the managing the debt on government of india first up so now you understand in uh, many books you will find that this is a policy related to government revenue and expenditure but you know that this middle version is also very very vital in making the policy because whatever we are thinking about like for example if we compare fiscal policy with monetary policy monetary policy deals with the interest rate monetary policy deals with the control of money supply but here fiscal policy is about collection of revenue and allocating this revenue to the productive and unproductive expenditure but what about we always talking about this middle part like maintaining fiscal deficit maintaining a revenue deficit etc getting my point so comprehensive definition of fiscal policy is 
that it is the policy related to government revenue, government expenditure and government borrowing. So there are three keywords. Are you getting my point? So under revenue, we have two types of revenue, tax and non-tax revenue. tax and non-tax revenue under tax we have two types of tax structure first one is your direct tax And second one is your indirect tax. Direct tax and indirect tax. There are list of direct taxes and list of indirect taxes. We'll discuss all the taxes that were before GST as well. Because the question may come. GST is still relatively new. So we'll discuss all these tax that was prevailed before GST. Under non-tax, there are types of revenue like disinvestment, we'll discuss that later. So first you write the heading direct tax on the next page. So this is the part of your uh, revenue side. Under taxation, we are writing direct tax. It is a tax, it is a tax whose impact and incidence, whose impact and incidence falls on the same individual, falls on the same individual. First off, the burden of direct tax the burden of direct tax cannot be shifted cannot be shifted to any other cannot be shifted to any other full stop did you understand this sentence it means there are two keywords what are those keywords impact and incidence so we need to understand what is impact and what is incidence in order to understand that they falls on the same person. So what is impact and what is incidence? Impact means first point of contact. It means, for example, if we take income tax on individuals. So income tax on individuals is imposed by government of India. So government of India imposes income tax liability directly on me. Getting my point? That is what we call impact. Impact means first point of contact. Now talking about incidence. Incidence means who is liable to pay the final burden. So in direct tax, the incidence will also fall on me because of my income. So the impact and the incidence falls on the same individual. Getting my point? What is impact? You write. It refers to the, it refers to the first point of contact. It refers to the first point of contact. It refers to the first point of contact of tax authority of tax authority with the with the libel authority with the libel authority. If I'm liable, it means government will impose or the first point of impact will falls upon me. Next line incident. It refers to it refers to the final burden. It refers to the final burden of actual payment of tax falls upon that person falls upon that person. 
in simple sense you can just think about incidence means so write in other words in other words the final burden of tax the final burden of tax is called incidence of tax so if i'll not pay direct tax it means suppose for example income tax government will catch me no other person because the impact and the incident falls upon me so government will catch me next one is your indirect tax so you write indirect tax indirect tax or it is the tax it is a tax in which the impact and the incidence the impact and the incidence falls on the impact and the incidence falls on different individuals or entity different individuals or entity in other words in other words the burden of indirect tax the burden of indirect tax the burden of indirect tax can be shifted can be shifted to others can be shifted to others yes any doubt regarding this it means the impact and the incidence falls on different person like for example gst the impact falls on the service provider or manufacturer so suppose we take a example of a restaurant owner so the impact of gst falls on that restaurant owner 5% gst you have to pay so government is imposing 5% gst on the restaurant owner now for example if that restaurant owner wants to pass on the burden of gst then he or she can easily pass on the burden on the consumer like for example when you dine and go for uh suppose for a meal they will give you a bill a bill of 100 rupees then 5% gst so ultimately you have to pay 105 rupees so whenever you will pay 105 rupees it means the impact was on uh, that service provider restaurant owner and the final incidence the final burden who is bearing final burden the consumers getting my point this burden can be shifted it means it depends on the seller that he or she wants to pass on the burden or not are you getting my point it means the li who is liable to pay gst who is liable to pay gst in our case the restaurant owner or the consumer why who is liable liable means from government authority if you will not pay gst will government catch you no so is liable restaurant owner because the impact falls on that restaurant owner service provider getting my point suppose you are paying some kind of gst obviously if you have submitted fees you have paid gst amount in this kalani can you government will not catch you in case of any discrepancy because you have paid on your part but what happened who is accountable kalan academy is accountable to pay gst getting my point so government will not catch you that is the meaning of indirect tax the incidence falls on the consumer but the impact on the service provider or the manufacturer <coughs> any doubt so we'll write few examples of direct tax first one excise duty
Is it visible? These are few important texts that we'll discuss and ultimately at last we'll discuss GST. So excise duty, service tax, VAT, income tax, corporate income tax, custom duty and GST. No, this is direct. This is direct. Corporate income tax, if you impose tax on suppose foreign company or any domestic corporate, then who is liable? Obviously that corporate. I'll explain one by one. It will take one hour. So we'll discuss extensively.